the history starts with Samson. Look at him now, chained, blind, and bound by the Philistines, a shadow of the man he once was. Yet even in captivity he reflects on the great strength that once defined him. He was no ordinary man. From his earliest days, Samson was marked by extraordinary power, but with that power came a life full of conflict. Imagine waking up every day knowing you possess the strength to tear a lion apart with your bare hands, but realizing too late that this same strength is both a gift and a curse. Samson's story isn't just about brute strength, it's about the battle within, a battle you might recognize in your own struggles between potential and pitfalls. Life, after all, is a series of battles, isn't it? Samson's battles were not only against Philistines but against himself. We all fight these internal wars and often, it's our own decisions that lead to our downfall. Samson's current situation, chained and blind, is the result of betrayal. How many times have we trusted someone only to find that trust shattered? Samson trusted Delilah and it cost him everything. This is a lesson as old as time. Those closest to us hold the power to break us. But here's the twist. Samson's story isn't just about defeat. In fact, his tale is a reminder that even in our darkest moments, redemption is possible. He reflects on his life, recalling the victories that seem so far away now. Remember that time when he used the jawbone of a donkey to slay a thousand Philistines? That wasn't just physical strength, it was divine purpose. His strength wasn't his own, it was a symbol of something far greater. Yet, he also acknowledges that his greatest failures often followed his greatest triumphs. Isn't that often the case in life? We reach the peak only to slip when we think we're untouchable. Samson's downfall wasn't the Philistines, it was his arrogance, his belief that his strength was invincible. And isn't that where we all falter, thinking we're invincible when the reality is, we're not? But even now, in the depths of his captivity, Samson's heart is stirred by one thought, vengeance. His eyes may be gone, but the fire within him still burns. There's something powerful about that inner fire, that desire to rise again. You see, Samson's story speaks to anyone who has ever been knocked down. Sure, he's blind now, but he's still Samson, the judge of Israel, and his spirit isn't defeated. In the same way, when life beats us down, it's that inner fire that can push us to rise again. Samson's story reminds us that even in our weakest moments we're not finished, not as long as that fire still burns. The stage for Samson's story was set long before he was born, with the Philistines dominating the Israelites for 40 long years. It wasn't just about armies or weapons, it was about power, fear, and submission. The Philistines had the upper hand, not just because of their iron weapons but because the Israelites had lost their way turning from God. Their sins left them vulnerable, and the Philistines exploited this, tightening their grip on the land. Imagine living under such oppression, your people enslaved, your nation's strength sapped and no end in sight. That's where Israel was. And yet, it's often in our darkest times that the seeds of hope begin to grow. What's fascinating about the Philistines is that their strength wasn't purely physical, it was technological. They had mastered ironwork, creating weapons that the Israelites simply couldn't match. The Philistines had swords and chariots of iron, while the Israelites were left with tools barely fit for farming. This technological superiority is not unlike the way modern advancements can seem overwhelming today, creating a divide between those with power and those without. Think about it, how often do we feel outmatched in a world where others seem to have better resources, more knowledge, or superior tools? It's easy to feel oppressed when the playing field isn't level. Yet this oppression wasn't just physical, it was spiritual. The Israelites had forgotten their covenant with God, and as a result, they were suffering. But here's the twist. The Philistines, for all their power, couldn't see that their real strength came from exploiting a people who had lost their way spiritually. The lesson here is clear. When we stray from our core values, from the things that ground us, we become vulnerable. Whether it's in our personal lives, careers, or communities, neglecting what truly matters makes us weak. The Israelites were learning that the hard way, and it was only a matter of time before God would raise up a deliverer to challenge the Philistine stronghold. Now, if you're feeling like the odds are stacked against you, take a lesson from this moment in Israel's history. Oppression, whether from outside forces or our own internal battles, can be overwhelming, but it often sets the stage for something greater. The Philistines thought they had won, but their dominance was about to be shaken. Just as the Israelites couldn't yet see a way out, there are moments in life where we can't either. But change is always around the corner, even when it seems impossible. Before Samson was even born, his destiny was sealed in a moment that was nothing short of miraculous. An angel appeared to his mother, a woman who had been unable to conceive, with a message that would change the course of history. The angel declared that she would give birth to a son, but this child was no ordinary boy. 
he was to be consecrated to God from the womb, set apart for a special mission, to begin the deliverance of Israel from the oppressive grip of the Philistines. It's hard to imagine the weight of such a prophecy, isn't it? Knowing that the child you're carrying is destined for greatness, born with a divine purpose. We often talk about purpose in life, but Samson's purpose was declared even before his birth. How many of us go through life wondering what we're meant to do, searching for that calling that feels like it's out of reach? Samson didn't have to wonder, his life's mission was clear from the start. But with that clarity came responsibility. His mother was instructed to live under special conditions during her pregnancy, avoiding certain foods and drinks to keep Samson's consecration pure. This is a powerful reminder that sometimes, when we are preparing for something great, sacrifices have to be made, even before we see the results. It's like planting seeds. You can't see the growth immediately, but that doesn't mean the work isn't necessary. Think about how this applies today. Maybe you're working toward a goal, sacrificing comfort or pleasure now for a greater purpose. Whether it's studying late at night for a degree, saving money for a future investment or even working on personal growth, the principle is the same. The angel's announcement wasn't just a prediction, it was a call to action. Samson's parents had to prepare, just as we have to prepare when we know something big is on the horizon. And sometimes, preparation is the hardest part because the results aren't visible yet. But trust me the foundation is crucial. But let's not overlook the significance of the angel's visit. Divine intervention doesn't always come in the form of heavenly messengers, but there are moments in life when things seem to align in ways we can't explain. A door opens and opportunity presents itself and suddenly you feel like you're being guided. Samson's parents must have felt this. Knowing their child was destined for something monumental must have been both humbling and terrifying. Yet, they accepted this responsibility because they believed in a higher plan. How often do we question our path, forgetting that there might be a bigger picture at play? As the angel's words echoed in Samson's mother's heart, the stage was set for his life to unfold. The promise of a son destined to bring vengeance upon the Philistines was both a gift and a challenge. And while Samson would grow into his strength, it was this moment, this announcement, that laid the foundation for everything that would come next. From the moment of his conception, Samson was set apart, dedicated to a higher purpose through the Nazarite vow. This vow wasn't just a casual commitment, it was a lifelong promise to God, steeped in rituals and restrictions meant to signify his devotion. Picture this, a child born to embody strength and leadership, yet required to adhere to strict rules, no wine, no contact with the dead and most notably no haircut. This vow was a tangible expression of his commitment, a visual reminder of his relationship with the divine. It's fascinating, isn't it? How something as simple as hair can symbolize a deeper connection to purpose and identity. Now you might wonder what does this mean for us in our everyday lives? The Nazarite vow teaches us about the importance of dedication and sacrifice. In a world filled with distractions, committing to a purpose can sometimes mean giving up things we enjoy. Think about your own goals, whether it's improving your health, advancing your career, or developing deeper relationships. What are you willing to sacrifice to achieve that? Just like Samson's long hair symbolized his strength, your sacrifices might represent your dedication. Perhaps it's setting aside an hour each day for self-improvement or refraining from social distractions to focus on your aspirations. Samson's vow was more than just a set of rules, it was a lifestyle. It highlighted the concept of living intentionally. Every aspect of his life was meant to reflect his commitment to God. In today's fast-paced world, we often find ourselves caught in routines that don't serve our higher purpose. Just as Samson had to maintain his vow, we too need to cultivate our lives around our goals. This could involve creating a daily schedule that reflects your priorities or surrounding yourself with supportive people who uplift your mission. After all, a supportive environment can be the wind beneath our wings, much like how Samson's family played a pivotal role in his life. However, there was a catch to the Nazarite vow that makes it even more intriguing. Any break from the rules required atonement. If Samson touched a dead body or drank wine, he would have to offer sacrifices to restore his standing. This highlights a powerful truth, we're all going to stumble. We'll make mistakes and stray from our paths, but the key lies in how we respond to those missteps. Do we wallow in guilt, or do we acknowledge our errors, learn from them and make amends? Samson's journey teaches us that setbacks are part of the process. What matters is our willingness to recommit and refocus on our purpose. As we delve deeper into Samson's life, it's clear that his Nazarite vow shaped him in ways he could not yet fully understand. It was a gift that came with expectations. Just as Samson was called to a life of strength and leadership, we too have the potential to embrace our unique missions. 
the Nazarite vow serves as a reminder that dedication is often the foundation of greatness, and though our paths may differ, the commitment to something greater than ourselves remains a universal truth. As Samson would soon find out however, staying true to his vow would be tested in ways he never imagined, beginning with his first love, a choice that would ultimately lead to conflict. Ah love, a force as powerful as any weapon, yet often as unpredictable as the tides. Samson's first love was a Philistine woman from Timnah, and this relationship set the stage for a cascade of conflict in his life. Despite his parents' warnings, Samson pursued this romance with a passion that left them exasperated. They couldn't understand why he would choose a woman from an enemy nation, especially when they knew the Philistines had been oppressing Israel for decades. But love can be a blindfold, can't it? It has a way of leading us down paths we might not otherwise choose, often compelling us to disregard wisdom and sound judgment. Samson's insistence on marrying this woman speaks volumes about his character. Here's a guy with immense strength and divine purpose, yet he falls prey to the allure of love, something we can all relate to. It raises an important question, how often do we ignore sage advice when our hearts are involved? In our own lives we might find ourselves in similar situations, pursuing relationships or careers that seem right to us but could lead to unexpected complications. The lesson here is to balance passion with discernment. Just like Samson should have listened to his parents, we too should weigh the counsel of those who care for us against our desires. This is not to say that love is inherently problematic. Rather, it's about understanding the implications of our choices. Samson's choice to marry outside his faith and people brought inevitable conflict. As he prepared for the wedding, tensions rose between the Israelites and the Philistines, revealing the deeper issues at play. Conflict often arises not just from external forces, but also from the decisions we make. If you find yourself in a situation where your choices may lead to conflict, whether in relationships, work, or personal matters, consider stepping back to assess the potential consequences. Ask yourself, what are the long-term implications of this decision? How will it affect my life and the lives of those around me? As the wedding day approached, Samson's passionate love turned into a testing ground for his strength, not just physical, but emotional and moral. Love can often be a battlefield, full of surprises and trials. Samson proposed a riddle to the Philistines during the feast, a playful challenge that seemed harmless at first. But it quickly spiraled into betrayal when his bride, under pressure, revealed the answer to the riddle. Here's where it gets interesting. This moment illustrates a critical point about relationships. Trust is the bedrock of any connection. Once betrayed, the foundation crumbles and Samson's rage would soon be unleashed, leading him to retaliate with violence. Ultimately, the conflict stemming from this relationship would ignite a series of events that underscored the delicate dance of love and loyalty. Samson's emotional turmoil wasn't just about a failed relationship, it was a reflection of his struggle with his divine calling and personal desires. How do we balance our heart's yearnings with our life's purpose? This remains a question that resonates through the ages, and Samson's story compels us to seek that balance. As the tension between love and loyalty escalated, Samson's life would take twists and turns he could never have anticipated, leading him down a path fraught with challenges and opportunities for redemption. Now, as we delve deeper into Samson's journey, the tension continues to build. The betrayal he faces is just the beginning of a whirlwind that will test his strength and resolve in ways he could never imagine. In a pivotal moment that showcases both Samson's physical prowess and his symbolic journey, he encounters a lion on his way to meet his bride. Imagine this young man, heart full of love, suddenly confronted by a roaring beast. This wasn't just a test of strength, it was a defining moment that would shape his identity. With nothing but his bare hands, Samson tore the lion apart, showcasing a raw power that left the onlookers in awe, if there had been any. This act wasn't merely a display of brawn, it was a manifestation of the divine strength bestowed upon him as part of his Nazarite vow. Now let's break this down. What does it mean to face your own lions in life? We all have our metaphorical lions, those challenges or fears that loom large and seem insurmountable. Just like Samson we might find ourselves standing at the crossroads of fear and courage. How do we respond? Samson didn't hesitate, he acted decisively. This is a vital lesson for us. When faced with challenges, sometimes the best course of action is to confront them head on. Think about a situation in your life that feels daunting. Whether it's a tough conversation, a challenging project at work, or personal doubts, Embracing that challenge could lead to significant breakthroughs. Interestingly, after this encounter, Samson returned to the lion's carcass days later, only to find honey inside. He scooped it out and ate it, breaking one of the core tenets of his Nazarite vow, avoiding contact with the dead. 
this moment is loaded with meaning. On one hand, it represents human nature, our tendency to stray from our commitments especially when temptation arises. On the other hand, it also signifies the sweetness that can emerge from our struggles. Sometimes, we find treasures in the most unexpected places, even in the aftermath of hardship. Think about the lessons learned from a challenging experience or the friendships forged in adversity. These can often be as sweet as honey. Samson's choice to eat the honey is a reminder that our decisions, even those that may seem minor, have significant consequences. When we stray from our commitments we risk losing sight of our purpose. It's like wandering off the path during a hike. Before you know it, you're lost in unfamiliar territory. So, how can we stay grounded? Regularly revisiting our goals and values can help. Reflect on your intentions. What do you want to achieve? What commitments have you made to yourself and others? Keeping those at the forefront can provide guidance when temptation calls. As we continue to follow Samson's journey, this encounter with the lion symbolizes more than just a battle one. It sets the tone for the internal and external conflicts that lie ahead. The sweetness found in the lion's carcass represents the potential rewards that come from facing our fears, but also serves as a warning of the cost of straying from our chosen path. As the wedding festivities began, the atmosphere was thick with anticipation, laughter, and an air of competition. Samson, always one to enjoy a challenge, decided to test his Philistine guests with a riddle, setting the stage for a dramatic turn in events. He proposed a playful wager. If they could solve his riddle they would win a set of clothes from him. If they failed he would win from them. The riddle itself was steeped in symbolism. Much like his life, it was complex and layered, reflecting the duality of strength and vulnerability that defined him. What a clever move. By introducing a riddle, he not only engaged his guests but also hinted at the underlying tensions of his situation. Yet, unbeknownst to Samson, this seemingly light-hearted game would soon spiral into betrayal. The Philistines, eager to win, pressed Samson's bride for the answer. When she succumbed to their pressure and revealed the riddle's solution, it shattered the trust between Samson and her. This moment is a powerful lesson about the importance of loyalty and trust in relationships. In our own lives we may encounter situations where loyalty is tested, and it's crucial to stand firm. Just like Samson's bride chose convenience over loyalty, we might sometimes find ourselves swayed by the voices around us. Reflect on the relationships in your life. Are there times when you've prioritized outside opinions over trust and loyalty to those close to you? Samson's reaction to this betrayal was swift and fierce. Enraged by the deception, he resorted to violence, killing 30 men from Ashkelon to pay the wager he had lost. This act of vengeance was not just about the riddle, it was a response to the deeper betrayal he felt. It raises an important point about how we handle betrayal and conflict. While anger can be a natural response, letting it guide our actions can lead to devastating consequences. Think about it, how often do we react impulsively when hurt or betrayed? This is a critical moment in Samson's life. It demonstrates how unchecked anger can spiral into violence and conflict, echoing the chaos in his personal relationships. Samson's escalation from playful riddle maker to vengeful warrior is a stark reminder of the thin line between humor and hostility. It speaks to the importance of emotional intelligence, understanding and managing our emotions. If we can harness our emotions and channel them constructively, we can avoid falling into the same traps that ensnared Samson. One way to practice this is through mindfulness. Taking a moment to pause, breathe and reflect before responding can make a world of difference. Ask yourself, is my response rooted in understanding, or is it fueled by anger and hurt? As the dust settled, Samson's choice marked a turning point in his life. The riddle that began as a playful challenge became a catalyst for violence, escalating tensions not just with the Philistines, but also within himself. His journey was becoming increasingly complicated, caught between love, betrayal, and a thirst for vengeance. The consequences of his choices were now rippling through his life, setting the stage for further conflict and challenges. It was clear that the love story he envisioned was unraveling, and the road ahead would demand even more from him than he had anticipated. After the whirlwind of the wedding and the bitter sting of betrayal, Samson's fury was far from quelled. In fact, it fueled an even bolder retaliation. When he learned that his bride had been given to another man, he was incensed. This was not just a personal loss for him, it was a deep affront to his honor, and he was determined to make the Philistines pay. Samson's next move was audacious and crafty, showcasing both his ingenuity and his fury. He captured 300 foxes, tied torches to their tails, and set them loose into the Philistine fields, igniting a fiery path of destruction that would decimate their crops. What a visual! 
Just imagine the scene, flames dancing in the night, the chaos of frightened animals and the devastation left in their wake. This act of vengeance is symbolic of how anger can ignite drastic actions. Samson was not only punishing the Philistines for his personal betrayal but also sending a clear message. He would not be trifled with. His destructive retaliation serves as a cautionary tale about the power of anger and revenge. It's easy to get swept up in emotions and respond in ways that can cause more harm than good. In our own lives we might find ourselves tempted to lash out when we feel wronged. But think about the potential fallout of such actions. Could there be a better way to address the hurt without escalating conflict? Reflect on past situations where anger drove your actions. What would you do differently today knowing the possible repercussions of your responses? Samson's fiery revenge also highlights the importance of strategic thinking. He didn't simply confront the Philistines head-on. Instead, he chose a method that showcased both his strength and his cleverness. There's a lesson here about the power of strategy over brute force. In conflict, it's often the one who thinks ahead that comes out on top. When facing challenges, consider your options. What strategies can you employ to address the situation effectively without letting your emotions take the lead? Perhaps brainstorming solutions, seeking advice from trusted friends, or even taking a step back to reassess the situation can provide clarity. Yet, while Samson's actions achieved immediate results, they also set off a chain reaction of violence and retaliation that would escalate tensions between the Israelites and the Philistines. This cycle of revenge highlights a harsh truth about conflict. Retaliation often breeds more conflict. It's a vicious cycle that can spiral out of control. As we navigate our own lives, it's essential to break the cycle of anger and retaliation. Instead of responding in kind, we can choose to engage in open dialogue or find constructive solutions. Samson's fiery assault on the Philistines led to even more bloodshed, as they retaliated by burning his wife and her father alive. The tragedy of this escalation serves as a poignant reminder of the collateral damage that often accompanies revenge. Samson's actions, while fueled by pain and anger, brought about devastating consequences for others. This moment underscores the weight of our choices. They ripple out and affect not just ourselves but those around us. As we delve deeper into Samson's journey, it becomes clear that the flames of vengeance can consume not only our enemies but also the innocent. With the cycle of violence intensifying and tensions mounting, Samson found himself at yet another critical juncture in his journey. After burning the Philistines' fields and suffering the tragic loss of his wife and father-in-law, he became a fugitive, hiding from those who sought revenge. In a twist of fate, the Philistines rallied together to capture him, believing that they could finally subdue the mighty judge of Israel. But they underestimated him. Samson was not just a man of great strength. He was a force of nature, a whirlwind ready to unleash his fury. As they approached, he was not merely hiding. He was preparing for a showdown that would become legendary. The moment of confrontation came when Samson found himself surrounded by a thousand Philistine soldiers. Rather than surrender, he looked around and spotted a donkey's jawbone lying on the ground. Without a moment's hesitation, he seized it and transformed what could have been a symbol of defeat into a weapon of triumph. With that donkey's jawbone in hand, Samson unleashed a ferocious attack, slaying a thousand Philistines in a single encounter. Can you imagine that? A single man, armed only with a jawbone, facing an army and emerging victorious. This moment isn't just about physical prowess. It encapsulates the idea that sometimes what we have at hand however humble, can be transformed into the means of our greatest triumph. This victory speaks to the notion of resourcefulness. Samson didn't have a sword or a shield. He had a jawbone and an indomitable spirit. In life, we often find ourselves in situations where we feel ill-equipped to face challenges. But here's the secret. It's not always the resources you have that matter, but how you utilize them. Reflect on times when you've had to make do with what you had. Maybe you faced a tough situation at work and had to get creative with limited tools. This kind of ingenuity can lead to extraordinary outcomes, just as it did for Samson. When life hands you obstacles, remember to look for the resources available to you, no matter how insignificant they may seem. As Samson stood there, panting and victorious, he didn't just feel the rush of adrenaline, he also understood the weight of his actions. This victory elevated him to the status of a judge of Israel, a title he would hold for the next 20 years. However, it was also a moment of reflection. After such a monumental battle, Samson proclaimed, with the jawbone of a donkey, I have made donkeys of them. This proclamation shows not only his pride but also a moment of clarity about the absurdity of the situation. Sometimes, when we emerge victorious, we need to remind ourselves not to let pride cloud our judgment. It's a delicate balance. 
confidence is essential, but hubris can lead to our downfall. Samson's victory, while remarkable, was also a precursor to the struggles he would face ahead. The Philistines were not going to back down, they had been humiliated, and their anger would fuel a desire for revenge. After years of serving as a judge and a warrior for Israel, Samson's life took another dramatic turn when he encountered Delilah. She was beautiful and captivating, and for a man known for his incredible strength, he seemed to find himself equally captivated by her charm. However, this romance was fraught with danger, a dangerous dance between love and betrayal. The Philistines, eager to capture their greatest foe, approached Delilah with a bribe. They would pay her handsomely if she could uncover the secret of Samson's strength. This is where the story takes a twist that many of us might recognize, a tale of love that becomes a tool for deception. Delilah's role in Samson's life highlights the complexity of trust. Here was a man who had faced down armies and lions, yet he found himself ensnared by the very one he loved. This dichotomy is poignant. We often place our trust in those we care about, sometimes overlooking red flags or doubts. Samson's repeated disclosures about his strength, his hair, the source of his power, showcase how easily we can become vulnerable to those we love. In our own lives, it's important to be discerning. Trust is a fragile thing and once broken, it can lead to devastating consequences. Reflect on your relationships. Are there areas where you may be overlooking the signs of potential betrayal? As Delilah coaxed him with sweet words, promising comfort and affection, Samson revealed the secret of his strength, believing that their bond was genuine. Little did he know that his vulnerability would lead to his downfall. When Delilah cut his hair while he slept, she not only robbed him of his strength but also of his identity. Imagine waking up to find everything you believed in stripped away, leaving you powerless. This moment serves as a stark reminder of the importance of safeguarding what matters most to us. For Samson it was his hair, a symbol of his dedication to God. For you, it might be your values, dreams or even your mental well-being. How do you protect those aspects of yourself that define who you are? The aftermath of this betrayal was brutal. Samson was captured by the Philistines, blinded and imprisoned. In his darkest hour, he must have felt the weight of his choices. The love he thought he had was actually his greatest weakness. This resonates with many of us. We've all experienced moments when trust has been shattered, and we felt lost or vulnerable. But even in this captivity, there's a flicker of hope. Samson's story doesn't end in despair. His imprisonment, while physically confining, allowed him to reflect on his life, his choices, and the path that had led him to this point. Sometimes, the most profound growth occurs in our moments of solitude and reflection. As time passed, the Philistines gathered to celebrate their triumph over Samson, showcasing him as a spectacle of their victory. It was in this moment of humiliation that the flicker of hope ignited once more. Samson, now blind, was led to the Temple of Dagon, where he prayed to God for strength one last time. This moment is incredibly powerful. It underscores the themes of redemption and the possibility of reclaiming one's purpose, even after betrayal. Just when it seemed that all was lost, Samson's strength returned in a final act of vengeance against the Philistines, illustrating that even in our darkest times, we can rise again. Now, how do you feel about your own story? What are you willing to do to become the best version of yourself? If you're ready for this transformation, please like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications to keep learning and be inspired by stories that can change your life. Your journey starts today.